of Michael Risk at McMaster up in Canada, who has been making trips to Iran for years doing environmental consulting, having to do with, with uh, coastal issues and so on. And, uh, and that's how he, uh, well, I understand that uh, Dr. Abbas has bailed him out of some situations, and so <laughs> they are good friends, and, <laughs> and, and he is the basic person who, who uh, arranged this. Uh, I might mention, some of you know that I lived in that area for almost three years and went from one end of the Persian Gulf and the other to the other, doing geophysical seismic, seismic sampling and coring, this and that and the other. <coughs> But we never, Shell, there was some problem between Shell and Iran, so we could not cross the midline of the Persian Gulf. I can say Persian Gulf now. If I was over there, we'd have to say Arabian Gulf. <laughs> <laughs> so there's been this, this distinction for some time. So I'm totally unfamiliar with all of the goodies that Dr. Alvis is going to talk about today. but. Uh, I'm, I'm from the other side of the Gulf. <laughs> so, best years of my life. And uh, so now, this is Dr. Abbas, and you can pronounce your last name. Yeah, Hatchinus. <laughs> okay, got that? <laughs> That'll be a test. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's going to tell us about some issues in the uh, northern part of the Persian Gulf. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm uh, Abbas Hakshinas uh, from Institute of uh, Geophysics, University of Tehran. Uh, this is the outline of uh, my talk today. I, I will talk uh, at first a little about Iran and the Persian Gulf. Uh, after that, uh, I will talk some. Uh, Something I, actually, I'm not a geologist, not a biologist. I'm coastal engineer, uh, and I'm. Uh, I want to give you some information uh, related to my uh, my researches, and I borrowed some concepts from geology and biology uh, to improve my knowledge in coastal engineering. Uh, I will talk about uh, sediment constituent analysis uh, we've done there sediment sources along the Iranian coastline, waves and muddy coasts, and uh, also some applications of the methods. And at last, I will talk about the strong currents in tang -e khuran near the Strait of Hormuz in the Persian Gulf. Okay, last year I was, uh, l last time in, in the States, I was in uh, San Diego, and uh, some guy asked me, where do you come from? And I told, from Iran. And, ha, ah, where's Iran? So this is <laughs> our globe. <laughs> Uh, in in uh, Middle East, this cat-shaped country is Iran. Uh, it's an ancient country. The most popular destination is uh, Persepolis in the middle part uh, of Iran here. Okay, the capital city is here, Tehran, and I come from this uh, small city in the south. Uh, a few photos of uh, Persepolis, and this is Mike Risk. We, we went to Persepolis someday. Okay, Institute of uh, Geophysics uh, was established in 1957, actually the year that was announced as the International Geophysical Year by ICSU. Uh, I, at the moment, there are three uh, groups active there, uh, physics of the earth, space physics, and physical oceanography. I work with uh, the physical oceanography group. And uh, Institute of Geophysics um, has uh, some national responsibilities for seismic data management, creating earthquake databases, and uh, actually defining research topics uh, in this uh, regard. Again, this is Iran. We have the Caspian Sea in the north, the Persian Gulf, the state of Hormuz, and the Oman Sea uh, in the south. The area of the country is something about 1,600,000 and something. 
and we have uh, totally something about 2,000 kilometers of coastline in the south and 700 kilometers uh, in the north. Uh, the active uh, Zagros Mountains uh, act as some margin in the uh, northern part of the uh, Persian Gulf. And this graph shows that uh, something about uh, 14,000 years ago, uh, sea level rise opened the uh, way from the open sea to the uh, Gulf and to the Persian Gulf. And uh, something, uh, the, 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 ro the sh uh, shoreline that we have at the moment was reached something about 6,000 years ago. And uh, recent studies shows that the uh, uh, coastal uh, uh, plate of, uh, of Iran on the Persian Gulf is uplifting with a rate between something about 0.2 millimeter per year to 7 millimeters per year. Uh, this is the uh, bathymetry of the uh, Persian Gulf. We have very shallow area here in the uh, northwestern uh, part and uh, deeper areas up to 100 meters here and again uh, shallow areas near the state of Hormoz in, in, in this part. Uh, these uh, red dots shows the uh, tide gauges, temporary tide gauges over the uh, uh, Iranian coastline and according to the data Mahshah in the somewhere here has the, uh, the the highest tidal range something about 5 meters uh, this map shows the uh, synoptic stations along the coastline and according to the data uh, the winds uh, come mostly from uh, northwest and uh, consequently we have uh, waves uh, mostly from uh, northwest and uh, very rare but strong events uh, from uh, southeast. Th therefore the uh, general uh, longshore current uh, is from northwest to southeast along the coastline. Uh, during the past decade uh, Iranian Port and Maritime Organization uh, did a <coughs> good monitoring and modeling uh, study along the coastline. These, uh, th this map shows actually the areas that we uh, measured waves, currents, and uh, sediments along the coastline for one year for a one-year period. And uh, this map presents the location of coral reefs uh, along the Iranian uh, c coastline. Uh, the most, uh, the area with uh, good coverage is located in the middle part here. And I, I will uh, talk about some environmental issue in Naivan Bay later. Okay, if you want to have a good uh, understanding of coastal processes, you need climatology, winds, waves, ecology, and geology, and uh, geomorphology, and sedimentology. And then you will have some good understanding of human impacts and you, c you can uh, plan uh, for a uh, future. Uh, in the section of climatology and waves uh, simulating winds, we have good knowledge at the moment. Uh, for ecology, uh, people are paying more attention these days. But uh, for the geology and geomorphology, we are in the beginning. I don't mean that we don't have good geologists, but we have very few uh, geologists communicating with coastal engineers in uh, coastal problems and uh, actually coastal uh, and environmental problems. So uh, a few years ago, uh, back to 2008 or 2007, uh, some Iranian scientists get familiar with uh, some geological uh, analysis. Uh, Mike Risk uh, taught us uh, this method, uh, s sediment constituent analysis, and we, uh, w we were trained uh, uh, looking at some samples from uh, Naiban Bay in the middle part of the Persian Gulf. And these, uh, I don't think 
I, I, I need to uh, explain these, this method here. But uh, we, we get samples uh, from uh, the coast, uh, get uh, photos of the samples, and uh, f find out how, uh, uh, what's the f uh, f fraction, what fraction each uh, sediment source uh, contributes in the, uh, informing the uh, sediment of the area. Okay, but if I want to talk about sediment sources along the Iranian coastline, uh, back to uh, our studies, an important portion of sediments in the Persian Gulf is bioclastic. Actually, uh, they are made in, in, in the marine habitats there, and uh, clastic sediment portion is less than one third at most, but in uh, most um, in most of areas, 100% uh, of the sediments are uh, carbonate, bioclastic carbonate. So in, in the southern coastline of Iran, biology is king. It makes sediments, support fish, make jobs. Uh, a few uh, photos of uh, corals and ocean spine uh, from the Persian Gulf. Actu uh, actually, these photos are taken by Mike Risk, and we have uh, oolite, uh, big oolite factories uh, that uh, in, the in the Persian Gulf and uh, different types of carbonate sediments, coral uh, sediments, shellfish uh, de debris, foraminophores, ocean spine, and uh, carbonate alga. But if I want to start from the uh, most uh, northwestern part, the area in the uh, northwestern part of the Persian Gulf is highly affected by uh, muddy deposits coming from Arvand River. Arvand River is located here and it's the border between Iran and Iraq. Uh, and this area is uh, completely covered, <coughs> covered by uh, muddy deposits. And we have muddy deposits somewhere here and here, but they are not dom dominated. Okay, uh, northwestern part, as I told before, uh, is completely affected by uh, muddy uh, sediments, and uh, as uh, mud deposits uh, absorb wave energy, we uh, don't have wave breaking over our the coastline at all. This is another example from the middle part of the Persian Gulf. This is Mond River. I will talk about this river later. But uh, we have uh, muddy deposits here as well. And these beautiful uh, muddy balls that uh, is uh, uh, formed by bulk erosion and then uh, rolling on the shoal. Okay. Waves traveling out, out the uh, muddy coast uh, dissipates. Uh, this uh, figure shows the plan of some field measurement in the area for uh, uh, the, to obtain uh, design data for some port that is to be uh, located uh, somewhere here. Uh, th these uh, yellow dots shows the uh, location of wave gauges in the area. And two storms were captured uh, during the uh, measure, measuring period. And uh, something about 44% of wave energy dissipated uh, during the storm event. Uh, and this uh, figure again shows uh, the waves traveling toward, uh, it's actually taken from a groin uh, perpendicular to the shoreline. And uh, you can easily see here that the way there's no wave breaking in the area. Okay, as far as we know, uh, on the northern coastline of the Persian Gulf, oolite sediments were not uh, reported before. 
we ha we had uh, uh, OLAC reports on the southern coastline in uh, United Arab Emirates, and maybe in Qatar, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, a few years ago, uh, when we were to, to some uh, uh, site visit with uh, Mike Risk, we, we find these beautiful uh, guys uh, on the shoreline. There are huge uh, Ulaid factories in the nor northern part of uh, the uh, Persian Gulf, just beneath the area that is covered by uh, very soft mud. Okay, these shiny wet Ulaids and dark dry Ulaids. And uh, uh, on this coast, dunes and uh, sand uh, flats are made of uh, pure oolite, but very old oolite. And uh, these oolites are good uh, habitat for uh, uh, for uh, foraminophores. And uh, we uh, f find out some uh, pollution source uh, according to this. Uh, deformed shape of oolites in, uh, of uh, foraminophores in the area. Uh, this figure shows the distribution of oolites along the uh, coastline. Actually, uh, from this point, that is some marginal uh, point between muddy deposits in the south and oolite sediments in the north. The uh, brown dots shows the coastline. Com uh, completely covered with oolite sediments. And uh, the, the red, the, the yellow uh, that shows the area that is covered with more than 50% of uh, oolites. Uh, there's some uh, buried uh, oil uh, pipelines in the area, uh, somewhere here. And uh, the uh, people in charge know that there's some uh, leakage from the uh, pipeline, but they didn't know where's the uh, leakage actually. But we, uh, we studied foraminophores in the area, and just next to the area with uh, many uh, deformed uh, foraminophore particles, we could find the uh, exact location of the oil leakage in the, uh, in the vicinity of the coastline. Okay, uh, from, from this location to the south, most of the coastline is sandy. Okay, uh, these graphs show uh, the sed sediment constituent uh, analysis results uh, on sediment samples taken from the, the, the shoreline. Uh, these purple and uh, this uh, tan color uh, are related to clastic sediments, but the other, other colors uh, are related to uh, carbonate sediments like uh, clams, corals, uh, foraminophores, etc. And a as you see here, uh, most of the sediments are carbonate, bioclastic carbonate. Again, Okay, and uh, Naiban Bay in the middle part of the Persian Gulf coastline is some pro protected uh, environmental area. And uh, the, uh, in the vicinity of uh, this protected area is uh, the South Pars oil and gas field that is the heart of uh, uh, development in this field in Iran. Uh, this is the uh, Naiban Bay. We have mangroves uh, in the north. Very beautiful uh, rocky coastline with pocket beaches in between uh, in the south. And good coral coverage in the area in the south. and very beautiful sandy beaches on the uh, east. Unfortunately, the, there was a port built in this area just on the margin of coral reefs. And uh, uh, 
uh, we uh, studied the sediment uh, samples uh, uh, taken from the area. Our, pri our uh, primary uh, investigations showed that uh, coral uh, uh, portion is very high compared to some, uh, to some coast uh, adjacent to healthy reefs. Uh, actually, th this red uh, line, the red color is uh, related to uh, coral sediments, and as you see here, it's almost in all the area is higher than 25%. Uh, th this, pr this primary assessment was uh, some kind of concern for us regarding the health of uh, coral reefs in the area, but uh, the uh, then the new port uh, was a big concern for uh, the uh, health of coral reefs, especially those in the uh, in this area. We did uh, we did a lot of sampling uh, around the bay and uh, an analyzed the samples to find out uh, uh, how much coral sediments do we have in the samples. Actually. This part of the study is done uh, by one of my, my and Mike's and mine, my students. Uh, she's very smart and seeking for PhD position if anybody is interested. Uh, okay, uh, these uh, boxes shows the percentage of coral sediments in the area. The red one is uh, before uh, building the port and the uh, purple one after uh, building the port. As y you can see here, uh, the, w when they made the breakwater, unfortunately they uh, used a lot of fine material to make the rubble mound. And uh, this make uh, the water uh, quality very poor in the area. Therefore, coral uh, grains are increased in in these, in the second uh, round of sampling. Okay, I want to uh, compare two uh, results before and after uh, uh, the port was built. In, the, in this location, the location that uh, the port was constructed. Okay, uh, this one 